In this video, I want to talk about some things that relate to uh, scenes and arrangement in machine. And I say this a lot, but I think one of the most tricky things to get used to for beginning machine users is the process of turning your ideas into something a little bit more developed. Uh, so taking that little drum loop or that little sample loop and then uh, and turning that into a like a three minute long project, something that you can really work with. Um, and, and I have a couple videos out there about the theory behind arranging, so kind of like the mindset to have when you're, when you're putting things together. Um, this video is going to focus just on the actual hardware aspect of it, um, the, the things in machine that we can use and the shortcuts on the hardware that we can make use of. So with that said, arranging happens with something called scenes. And uh, let's try to get an understanding of what these actually are. Um, so the first thing we see if we press the scene button is that we already have one loaded up. So something that we've done in the process of recording has already created our first scene. And what we'll come to understand is that a scene is sort of like a container. It holds different patterns across different groups. It's a way to tell machine to, to look at the different groups and then play a specific pattern for each one. Um, so let's see what this first scene actually holds. What is telling machine to do? Um, on my group B here, my drums, I have it playing my first drum pattern. On group C, I have it playing um, no pattern at all, actually. And on group D, I have it playing no pattern as well. So this first scene here is only playing one pattern on my drums. And so if I press the play button, there we go, that's what we get. So it's just a way to tell machine what patterns to play from each of your groups. Now, how do we go ahead and edit the scene? If we, if we press the scene button here, there's nothing that really, uh, that really can let us edit the scene in this button, in this menu here. So um, most, of the, most of the editing of scenes happens actually with this pattern button here, uh, removing patterns, adding patterns, um, changing pattern lengths, stuff like that. So if we wanna edit the scene and add some patterns both from my base and from those samples, all we have to do is go to those respective groups. So I'll work with my sample, and then add a pattern in, and then go to my base and add another pattern in. And so now if I play this, now the scene, I just edited the scene to hold those patterns from those other two groups. Um, so, so again, the editing happens mostly with patterns. And what you'll come to see is that scenes are very dependent on the patterns that make them up. Now, another thing to note is that um, if we look at the scene button, there's nothing that's going to let us change the length of it. So the length of a scene is actually dependent on the longest pattern in that scene. Um, so you can't change this, the, the scene length independently of anything else. It's just totally dependent on what the patterns are that make it up. And so this works pretty well when all of your patterns, if you see all my patterns here are four bars long. And so this, this makes sense because they're all just going to layer together at the same length. Um, but some interesting things happen when we start adding patterns of different lengths. Uh, so I wanna show you what happens there. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new group here. I have a crash symbol in the browse menu. Just gonna load this up. So all I'm gonna do here is just make a f uh, one bar long pattern. So this will be um, shorter than all the other patterns. And I'll go ahead and record this. And then we're gonna see what happens. <laughs> So what we hear is that um, although our, our scene is four bars long, because it's, it's dictated by these other longer patterns, this one bar long pattern that I just created is just completely looping over four times um, to match the length of those other patterns. Um, so with this, we can see that, that within scenes, um, the shorter patterns will just loop as long as they need to to make up the extra space in order to fill up those gaps created by the longest pattern. Um, so if you have any shorter patterns, they're just going to repeat over and over. Um, there isn't a way to just create a one bar long pattern and have it play once and then stop for the rest of the scene. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when you're working with these. So um, now that we have sort of an understanding of what a scene is, we can start using these to arrange our track. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this group just because um, I was just using that as an example. And we can start and think of, of what we want to arrange our track as. So maybe I want to start with intro of just a sample group here. So uh, this first scene, I want to have it sort of as an introductory scene. So what I'm gonna do here is go to my groups with my drums and then just remove my pattern. And I'm gonna hit the remove pattern up here, this button. Uh, make sure you hit remove and not delete. Uh, the difference is that delete will actually get rid of the pattern forever and remove will just take the pattern out of that respective scene. So I'll take out my drums and I'll also take out my bass. So all we're left with is this sample. So there we go. We know that this first scene is going to play um, just the sample. And now we can go ahead and start thinking of another scene, sort of like another section of the track that we want to make. So I'm just going to press over to a new scene. And now if I have this, this new one loaded up, if I press the play button, we actually don't hear any sound because we haven't loaded any patterns. So let's think about what we want to load in here. I'll probably want to have the sample carryover from group C. Maybe we'll bring in the bass 
and then we can also bring in the drums just for the heck of it. And so now if I press the play button, all those things are playing now. So now we have this introductory scene. Let's go back here. And then we have this sort of more developed scene. So now we can start thinking of how would these sound one after another. Let's see. All I have to do is just press over. Now if you hear that, it changed over to the scene very quickly. Um, we also have an option to, to tell Machine how quickly to change in between scenes. So let's go ahead and look at that. Um, I'm going to go into the grid menu here, make sure I'm on the Perform tab at the top, and then I have these options here. So um, what this is going to tell Machine to do is play over to the next scene at the next half note, the next quarter note, and so on. I mean, I almost always have it on scene, which will make Machine uh, finish one scene before it goes on to the next. So I'll leave it on this and then uh, try to do those, those scene changes again. So start with number one, then I'll switch over to number two. So right now Machine is waiting. It's waiting for this first scene to finish. And then uh, it's going to switch over to the next one. So hopefully this sort of gives you an idea of what these are. It's just sort of sections of a track that hold different patterns and you can use them to arrange your track. Um, we can also do some shortcuts here. Um, a lot of the time, if you want to make just subtle changes to one of these scenes, so um, say I want to just keep this one the same except for changing one pattern in one of the groups, I'll just select this one, hit duplicate, that's going to copy it over, and then now that I'm working with this one, I can maybe go ahead and change my drum group. Now it sounds like this. So it's easy to, uh, to make those subtle changes by duplicating and then changing the small parts that you want to work with. Um, so you can repeat this process uh, several times. So maybe I'll just do one more as sort of like an ending scene. Just create a new scene here. Um, let's see, I want my sample to play. Maybe my bass. Maybe I'll just have the sample and the bass play, but no drums. So, so we have like a very short project, uh, just like a very uh, very easy, easy example here. And uh, maybe you want to hear all the scenes play in a row. Um, if any time, if you want to play, if you want to hear a, a number of scenes play one after another, um, instead of waiting and manually switching them, you can just press your first one you want to hear, hold that down, and press the last one you want to hear. So I can do that for all of them, or I can do that for three of them, or whatever. Just a few other uh, other options in the scene menu here. Um, if I have a scene that I want to move around, I can just use the position option here to change it. Um, so that is a, a quick way to move things around. It's also nice to look in the screen here and, and kind of keep track of things. And you can also go in the software and rename these, uh, keep everything straight. And uh, that'll help you when it comes time to really see what's going on and make sure you know where you are in your project. So that was a good rundown of how to use scenes and how to arrange and machine. And um, like I said, it's one of the trickier things to really get an understanding of. So just play around with it until you get the hang of it. And I hope this video is a good starting point. And with that, uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. So we can go ahead and move on to the next one.